Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Recently we released our NAD level result, which show my wife and I are both not in the optimal range. According to Professor Scher, the optimal range is based on people in their early 20s, and he also mentioned that the baseline of NAD levels to each age group is not established yet. How we define the optimum uh, threshold? Mm. I, I believe that we want to maintain or achieve uh, the levels found in young people, uh, you, very young people, and uh, you can define you know, how young. Based on our evidence, we believe the levels are mostly uh, stable and high in people younger than 20 years of mm -hmm. age. And that, that's sh that was shocking to me because we were thought that you know, uh, adults in their 20s, 30s uh, sh should still have, a, you know, high levels of NAD, right? That was mm -hmm. at least what I believed in. But as more data we get, and we did find a small number of uh, people in their 20s, especially in late 20s, where they have you know, declined uh, levels of NAD. So the threshold that we set uh, for intracellular NAD is 34 micromole. So the vast majority of young people have uh, NAD levels uh, at 34 micromole or higher. Unfortunately, uh, NAD levels decline with, uh, with age. You know, by the seventh decade, we probably, the mean NAD level is probably about one third of uh, uh, 34 micromole. So how our chronological and epigenetic age is related to the NAD levels is very interesting to us. Today we will have a look at three clinical trials which are evaluating or targeting to reverse epigenetic age that we found interesting. One of the trials will examine the correlation between epigenetic age and NAD levels and other biomarkers for healthy adults. All the trials are still in the recruitment phase as of today, September the 8th, 2021. For anyone who is interested in joining the trials, please reference the links to the trial pages in the description. Let's have a look at the trials. Here is the first trial, biomarker study to evaluate correlations between epigenetic aging and NAD plus levels in healthy volunteers. And the status is recruiting. Looking at the trial in more detail, the participants will make a single visit at which eligibility will be assessed and samples of blood, saliva, and urine taken. There is no treatment in the trial. It is an observational only. And what will they measure? A range of biomarkers, including NAD plus levels in the blood, interleukins, inflammatory cytokines, growth factors, omega-3 polyunsaturated fats, and DNA methylation. The primary outcome is the correlation between biological age calculated from blood and circulating NAD levels in the blood, with a secondary outcome being the correlation between biological age calculated from saliva and NAD levels in the blood, and the same for omega-3 fats in the blood. It will be interesting to see if the biological age calculated from blood and saliva matches. They will also compare the biological age to a number of other biomarkers, including CD38 expression and markers of inflammation. The participants are healthy people between 25 and 80. It would appear that the trial was delayed, maybe because of COVID. As we can see from the CenterWatch website where it shows it is recruiting for 170 participants, and this was updated very recently. I think this is very interesting and really hope that they published the results. It would be great to see the correlation of all these markers, not only to chronological age, but also to epigenetic age. Here is our next trial. Topical wrapper use in inflammation reversal and resetting the epigenetic clock, which is also recruiting. In this trial, they are using a topical ointment, which is 8% rapamycin and applying it to the forearms. It will be randomized with each participant being their own control with one arm being the treatment and the other the placebo. The trial will last for six months. There are 50 participants. 
The primary outcome is the epigenetic age of the skin on the two forearms. And they will also look for inflammatory markers, CRP and interleukin-6. The participants are older adults from 65 to 95 who are in good health. Again, great to see a trial use, using epigenetic age with rapamycin in a topical format. Our last trial is TRIMEX, Thymus Regeneration, Immunorestoration and Insulin Mitigation Extension Trial. This has already started, but the recruiting is ongoing as they will take a new batch every month. In fact, we were excited to hear that one of our listeners has recently enrolled in the trial. We discussed the trial with Dr. Fay, who is the lead researcher. Can you talk, what is the current status? So um, is the, yeah, I mean, the program has started and- Yes. Yeah. Can you talk about how many people have you enrolled and uh, how's that going? We've uh, enrolled about a quarter of the number that we're kind of targeting, uh, one quarter to one fifth. So we're, we're thinking in terms of a uh, trial size of maybe 80 to 100 people, something like that, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, but uh, in that general ballpark. Uh, and uh, we've enrolled about 23 people so far. Uh, we're kind of uh, bringing people in slowly uh, mm -hmm. to make it easier for us to keep up with things and make adjustments. That's been very beneficial. We've developed a number of ways of coping with the extra data load compared to trim. So we're able to, you know, I had a heck of a time keeping up with nine guys in trim, but I'm keeping up with the 23 people uh, fairly well uh, in, in TrimX. But uh, we're continuing to uh, improve the technology of monitoring and, and updating people uh, so that we can more easily accommodate more people as we go forward. Are you still looking for volunteers? Do you have like sure. a waiting list you're looking? Yeah, we do have uh, uh, several people in the queue, but we don't have... 60 people in the queue at this point. So uh, there's uh, ample space for people to come in. TRIMEX is an expansion of TRIM, an earlier trial, which was the first to show epigenetic age reversal. The main aim of the trial is to regenerate the thymus, a key gland in the immune system, which deteriorates with age. The main intervention is human growth hormone, somatropin. Since this has the effect of raising insulin, Metformin and DHA, which control insulin production, are included. The aim of the trial is to extend the previously successful trial to a wider population, including women, for example, and to confirm the results that they saw before. It is a randomized clinical trial with 85 participants. The key outcomes they are looking for are epigenetic age, regeneration of the thymus, and safety with a secondary outcome of assessing the immune system, in particular, naive T-cells. Eligibility for the trial is for healthy participants aged between 40 and 80 years old. The TRIM trial is so interesting because the previous trial has already shown a positive result and the drugs in the trial are well known and well studied, which would seem to imply that a commercial intervention could be available sooner rather than later.